Hey everybody, how's it going? Scott Spritzer here, DocSports.com. Triple Crown finally getting underway on Saturday afternoon, and uh, we're going to give you our free picks here. In fact, they are our only picks. You don't have to go over to DocSports.com for my horse racing picks on Saturday. We're just going to give them to you right here, and uh, we'll get to that in just a moment. We do have a lot going on Saturday and Sunday. Soccer, we've got a two-play card that starts Saturday, ends on Sunday morning. Uh, UFC is the big thing for us on Saturday. I got a six-star play. Uh, part of a 2-0 UFC card. We've managed to go 5-0 with our top of the ticket plays in UFC since the UFC did return to action after the suspension due to the virus. So we'll look to make it six straight top of the ticket winners in UFC action. That'll be available at 11.30 a.m. Eastern, 8.30 a.m. Pacific. But again, as far as horse racing, as far as the Belmont Stakes, this is it. You don't have to go anywhere else for my picks. They're going to be posted right here, and I'm going to get to those in just a second. I bring out... If you can see this, the good luck charm, as we like to call it. As you can see, it's uh, had its better days, but this is uh, Exarban Racetrack, where I happen to grow up uh, in the Omaha, Nebraska area, and, and uh, really, really got uh, into not only sports betting, uh, but horse racing um, at that track, Exarban, when I was just a young kid. And I've told the story before that uh, my uncle through marriage, a guy by the name of Robert Mundorf, known as Bobby Mundorf, was a world-class jockey, and he, in fact, uh, in 63 or 64, I believe it was, when he was Jockey of the Year at Del Mar. You can look him up. You can Google him, Robert Mundorf or Bobby Mundorf. And that's how I got into it. I was just a young kid in the early 70s listening to some of the stories uh, that were told about horse racing. And like I said, in my first... My first horse racing ventures ever uh, when I wasn't even 13 yet at Exarban Racetrack. And, and if this is going to be one for those of you who are either over 50 or you're just a horse racing uh, historian aficionado, that's your expertise. But my favorite jockey of all time, I guess, because when I got into horse racing, that's who I rooted for, was a guy by the name of Johnny Lively who raced for several seasons at Exarban. Uh, but anyway, that's been the good luck charm. When we brought it out, we've had excellent results over the years and I've saved that hat for 40 years so uh, let's get to it uh, Saturday afternoon of course this is a different handicap than uh, most Belmonts because it is shorter it's much shorter than the actual Belmont that we've been handicapping over the last several years uh, it also kicks off the triple crown obviously and I gotta tell you what man other than the favorite, the big favorite in this race, tis the law. This is not a great group of horses. This is kind of a mediocre group after tis the law. And that's why you're going to have to include them and tie them up in exactas and exotics and things like that. Because uh, right now, as we speak, last check, he was six to five. But I don't think he's going to go off even that good if you want to play tis the law. So you have to tie him in a little bit with some exotics. Definitely include tis the law. I mean, he's the talent of the race and it's not even close now here's the one caveat he did run a little crooked in a couple of races as of late jockey got him back on track got a name straight right to the finish we'll see if that comes into play in this particular race uh, he has won four of his last five or four of his first five uh, races uh, maybe you can get him at even money then at that point maybe you play him to win place and show but listen i know that stable really wants this race but i think it's a situation where you're better off playing him in exotic so here's what i am I'm planning to do and I'm not going to go into details about why tis the law is so great it's so easy to find information on this horse uh, that I'm sure you've been hearing about it all week as we get into Saturday uh, but I do like an exacta on the eight tis the law uh, with the four and the ten which is modernist and pneumatic uh, I think we can tie him in with those two horses uh, Bill Mott trainee modernist of course pneumatic I'm telling you what right now I like the trainer for pneumatic I, I don't think you know coming from the outside is going to be all that tough um, he here's the bottom line I think there's one horse that can come in here and get involved with those three horses I just mentioned and that would be Sole Volante, Sole Volante. and one thing about that horse it's a closer any of the closers in this race have a much better chance than they normally would at the Belmont Stakes because of the distance you know if, if they run out of steam they can't close well when this is its normal distance so I think closers have a little bit better chance but I just can't pick anybody to knock off Tis the Law 
Uh, so that's what my suggestion is, is the Exacta 8 with the 4 and the 10. And I've checked all the major books. It is, as I'm looking at my clock here, about 4 a.m. Eastern time, 1 a.m. Pacific time, Saturday morning. I checked everywhere because I wanted to give you a couple of um, matchups and I wanted to jump on Sole Volante if we got a couple of decent matchups. But the problem is I'm looking at a bunch of books and, and, and especially the ones that are easily accessible and none of them have matchup odds up right now. Uh, so unfortunately, we can't give you anything there. But when the matchup odds start to come out, I would start looking to match up Sole Volante if you can get him against another horse and not lay more than minus $1.20. Even use him as a dog if you can. Uh, but he will not obviously be on my matchup list against Tis the Law. So the official plays again, uh, the exacta, the number eight to the four and the 10. That's the number eight Tis the Law to number four Modernist to number 10 Pneumatic. That's going to do it for me for the Belmont Stakes. We will be right back here. Should be between 8 p.m. Eastern, 10 p.m. Pacific. Uh, excuse me, 8 p.m. Eastern, 10 p.m. Eastern on a Saturday night with a look at Sunday's card. Uh, we might talk some NASCAR. We had a nice NASCAR winner here, free pick uh, last week. So let's rack it up and let's do it again. So listen, let's put Saturday in the win column right back here Saturday night with our next report. I'm Scott Spritzer, DocSports.com.